Hello and welcome to our latest video where today we're doing something very different to usual. We're visiting a car company, but it's not just any old car company. This is one that's been around for decades. We're at Alvis in the small town of Kenilworth near Coventry. And this is a company that have been producing cars for decades, absolutely ages. Chances are you may have heard of Alvis and seen their beautiful pre-war style cars, or it may be a car company that you're yet to hear about or have only just discovered. Luckily for us, there's a man inside here who happens to be the big boss of Alvis that can tell us everything we need to know about this company. His name's Alan Stote. He's just through those doors. So let's go on in, learn about this company, and if we're very lucky, take one of their cars for a little drive. Alan. John. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting us to this very exciting, beautiful showroom. Absolute pleasure. Now, I'll be honest, I'm familiar with the Alvis brand. I've seen it on the front of cars for many years and I've always admired these beautiful cars, but as knowledge of the company goes, I'm not that clued up, but I have a feeling you probably are. Well, I can certainly tell you something about it. Fantastic. Where should we start? I know there's well, two beautiful photos at the back here. I'm guessing these are two key people. They are. They are. The man on the left is uh, uh, T.G. John. He was uh, a, a marine engineer born in South Wales, Pembroke Dock. And he came to Coventry in 1919 after the First World War um, and started uh, a factory in, in Coventry. It, initially, they were involved in making aluminium pistons. Right. But by 1920, he was making small, light cars. Brilliant. And in 1922, this chap here, uh, Captain Smith Clark, uh, uh, he was with Daimler and he was an engineer with uh, Great Western Railways. Uh, he joined Alvis and he was a brilliant engineer. T.G. John was also a very good engineer. And I think the reason the company became successful was because you had a businessman engineer talking to a a pure engineer, which meant that things were understood between them. In the 20s, um, Alvis were, uh, made a, a, a small light car, which is the same as that one there that's in the corner, right. which is a 1030. Little uh, side valve car, fantastic quality. And that would have been 500 pounds when you've been paying 100 pounds for an ordinary car. Mm. The thing to understand about Alvis was that they, they were coach built cars, which means that Alvis never made any coachwork. In the 20s, to make your, your car, uh, marketing your car, it was important to show its reliability. One of the ways of doing that was racing. Mm -hmm. And Alvis went into competition in, uh, in the 20s. And in 1925, they produced the world's first all front wheel drive car. Ah, oh, wow. Um, and in 28, they made two cars that went to Le Mans and they came first and second in their class, and they came sixth and ninth overall. And that sixth and ninth position, they were only beaten by four litre cars. Wow. Now, Alan, we're in a room full of incredible cars, and it's quite difficult to know where to start, isn't it? But this one has definitely caught my eye. Is there something significant about this one? Yes, this was the Alvis Motor Show car uh, of 1935 in the, uh, in the Paris Motor Show. And it was bought by a, a Swedish racing driver, and uh, he had a very special body, one-off body put on by Vitelli. It's what we call an airline saloon, very Art Deco. Yeah. And that's got a 4.3 litre engine, and it was the only one that was ever made that way. But that's what coach building is. He could have it exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Um, similarly, there was the motor show car of 1938. Right, let's definitely go and have a look at this as well then. Yeah, this is a spectacular looking thing, isn't it? This car was built especially for the Olympia Motor Show in 1938. Its features are it has a concealed hood. The hood drops down into, into a well at the back. Um, again, this was a one-off body wow. just for the Motor Show. And we make these as the continuation cars now. These are available as the continuation cars. Fantastic. Another example of a post-war car is the Graber that was built specially um, in Switzerland for a customer 
with a grava body. So what era would this be? Because this... 1966. Right. So yes, and this is such a contrast, isn't it? In comparison to the beautiful Coach World, both beautiful in their own right, but almost unrecognisable as a mm. as a brand. This yeah. kind of gives me almost Lancia, Alfa yeah. Romeo yeah. styling. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful thing. There's a trophy cabinet over here. Yep. Anything in here worth mentioning? So this contains the memorabilia um, that we have from the factory. Um, in the mid 1920s, they made two Grand Prix cars, single seaters. Um, that's the steering wheel off the one. That's the Conrod that failed wow. and put this car out of action. But they were very um, uh, advanced motor cars of their time. And um, we've got one that survives, which we're exhibiting in Japan at the moment. Fantastic. So one question I have for you, I've noticed on the front of a lot of these cars, there are slightly different mascots. I'm looking at, is it a hare or a rabbit? Well, most mascots were post-purchase fitments. People, they were aftermarket fitments. There was a company called AE Lines in Coventry who made a lot of them. Okay. This is a hare, and yep. a lot of the uh, um, early cars, the 20s cars, would have had hares. Got you. Uh, they, they varied. In the 30s, they put on eagles, such as the yep. car you see up there, there. and then yep. Uh, on the 4.3s, it was often uh, the mascot you see there. Great, fantastic. So, is there anything else in here that's of a particular significance? Well, I'd like to show you this car here. In 1932, Elvis radically changed the way in which they uh, designed the, the car. You'll notice that if you, if you see a, the car next to it, mm. it's higher. Yes. Um, this car is a 1932 car. Uh, that, I think, is a 1929 car. Tastes had changed and people wanted lower rakish cars. Okay. And this particular car has still got its original paint. Wow. Um, from 1932. It was the very, very first um, Vandenpla bodied uh, Alvis Speed 20. Fantastic. And it's still got its original paint, original trim. It's as it was, it's a piece of history. Love it. So there you go, the car culture of lowering your cars yeah. didn't start recently, it started in the 1930s. Yeah. yeah, what a fantastic looking thing. Now I understand there's also a bit of a workshop to go and see as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Should we make our way down yes, there? Yes, we can. Now John, I'd like you to see this before we uh, go anywhere else, because I think you might find it uh, quite interesting. Okay. In these cabinets is a car record for every car that Elvis ever produced, oh, a total wow. of 22,000. <laughs> um, they're rather like the birth certificates for each car. Um, so you can see, for example, this car here was car number 7156. It was dispatched on the 3rd of May, 1923. Uh, it was a two-seater. Car bodies were the coach builders uh -huh. and it was pastel blue. Wow. And all those other... And what I especially love, so you've got here, it's almost like a build sheet showing the manufacturer of every different component. Yes. Um, so springs, wood head springs. Yes. Um, tires, of course, another relatively local company, Dunlop Cord, mm -hmm. written down for the tires, of course, based just outside mm -hmm. Birmingham. Um, it's just amazing. And this is, how many did you say? 22,000. <laughs> Incredible. And of course, you, you could, with Alvis, you could have what you wanted. I've got a record of a car that the owner wanted the speedometer to read 120 mile an hour top speed instead of the 100 mile an hour on the standard. The car <laughs> didn't go any quick. He had a speedo that read 120 Fantastic. mile an hour. Fantastic. If you, if you were prepared to pay, you could have what you wanted. <laughs> These are tracings of the original drawing. So what would happen, the drawing office would, would draw uh, the actual drawing in, in pencil. Yeah. And then they'd have ladies who copied them in Indian ink so they could be distributed in the factory. Wow. There's something else over here which I think you'll find interesting. Elvis, being the great documenters that they were, had a correspondence file with every customer. And this one is the Duke of Edinburgh's. Oh, wow. Oh, gosh, with a... Uh a letter from the Royal Muse of Buckingham Palace. Dear Sir, I've now spoken to the Duke of Edinburgh mm. on subject of power steering for his car and His Royal Highness has asked me to say that he prefers not to have this fitted, mm. but appreciates your kind thought in inquiring about it. <laughs> Incredible. So this is, I mean, we think now of 
modern car modern correspondence been getting our car services door built it would be an email thread wouldn't it this is now to have these documents it's just fantastic what an absolutely amazing and you thing. can imagine that when somebody today buys their Elvis for their collection to have copies of its history brings yeah. the whole car to life it gives it a personality absolutely it makes it real fantastic right well speaking about bringing these cars to life i'm itching to see this workshop okay. so should we head down and have a look let's go down yep this is the mechanical workshop uh -huh. um, this is where we do anything from a service right the way through to complete mechanical rebuilds and that is uh, that's the latest drop head uh, new car for japan Aha, uh -huh. so this is one of the continuations. Yes, it is, yeah. Fantastic. So this will eventually be going to a customer, I see. In assume? Japan, yeah. Wow. Fantastic. And these are the, so this engine again, I mean, I know we were looking at a, a four cylinder drawing, weren't we, upstairs? That's but a six cylinder. Three this liter. essentially is a this six cylinder, but that again will be created from the same original. No, they're in stock. New parts from six cylinder. No way. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> You'll see that. Great. Right. So, I'm guessing there's a big stock room then? There is. Great. And John, this is uh, the fabrication shop which I wanted to show you. Wow. Um, this, uh, this is where we build the bodies onto the chassis. So there's a complete chassis here, oh, and yes. we're building the framework onto that. This is the jig, which is a, an accurate profile of the Graber body car that you saw in the showroom. Yes. And what Paul does, who's in charge of the fabrication shop, is that Paul uses this as an actual, a, a, a former for making sure. He, he doesn't hit it against that, he simply, he uses that wheeling machine yeah. So, do you want to go and show us what the million machine so this does? This is an old English wheel. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, it's basically stretching the material. All this does is stretch. So you, you're putting form in this way, and you can go. If you want to take your cut edge down. Uh -huh. I see, so it's raised it up slightly, yeah. yeah. Wow. So every panel like this, how, how, how much time are you putting just into one panel? What did the doors? Yeah, the doors are about five to six weeks. Wow. For the outers and the inners. Now these, uh, John, are <laughs> wow. unrestored alvises which um, provide us with heritage chassis for customers who want a heritage chassis. This is, a, <laughs> this is an amazing room. The smell in this room is, is it's Stuff a bizarre I'm... combination of oils and leathers and, yeah, uh, yeah wow. So where, where have these cars come from? We just accumulated them over the years. But it means you can choose your car and you can have whichever body you want fitted on it. Oh, I see, so you could, yeah, pick up yeah, the Yeah, because Elvis never mind the coach work. Uh -huh. Fantastic. How often does this become a thing where customers will come in and say, right, there we go, that'll do me, I'll take that. Does it, is this a frequent thing? Or? Well, it's happened. Uh, we, I mean, we've done a number of cars from here. It's a bit like choosing your lobster in a restaurant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, a bit annoying, but I'll, I'll have the one right at the <laughs> yeah, back, okay. if that's OK. <laughs> Oh, wow. So this is the uh, the parts I mean, where we store all the components to make the cars. Many of there's nearly 400,000 parts here. Many of them <laughs> go back to uh, the 20s. Um, and of course, when we're building the continuation cars, we're using new stock that was built uh, that was produced by Elvis in the 60s. So the engines are original new engines that uh, were made in the 60s. Uh, which so that's these here, these yes, engine blocks yeah, were, yeah. were made, forged 
yeah. put it's together in the 60s. 60s. And here they are now ready yeah. to go into a car in mm. 2023. Mm. And, uh, you, you just told me beforehand, these boxes, mm. again, I think we automatically assume, don't we, if you're going to have a stock room and you need boxes, you go and buy boxes from somebody. Why would you buy boxes when you're an engineering company? So exactly. all of these boxes are actually made by the original factory as well. Yeah, these are all from the original. They came in, they're the 1929 uh, uh, stillages and, uh, and uh, boxes that were used in Alvis. And when Alvis transferred the passenger division here, it all came with it. Wow, incredible. And judging by the way that these are designed, it looks like there's yes, more. Yes, it gets even more interesting upstairs. <laughs> so this is the second floor of the parts stores. Wow. Um, which just shows you all of these are fitments and components for all the various models. We never throw anything away. We make sure that we keep samples of everything so we know um, when we have to reproduce them, but it goes on and on. It really, it really does go on and on. I mean, it's, I would never have known such an incredible amount of stock. And these are, this is the top of the, uh, of the racks of the racks that we see downstairs. Gosh. And so what proportion of the stock in here would have come from the original factory versus stuff that's been remade, do you think? There's about 35,000 what we call model fitments. Uh -huh. Those are individual parts that fit across a range of models. Gosh, it's incredible. I wish you could smell this room. <laughs> it's just, yeah, amazing. Every, every single room and every space that we've gone to, it seems to be a different atmosphere feel, mm -hmm. a different smell, slightly different texture to everything. It's just, yeah, it's amazing. What an amazing place. So Alan, you've given the most fantastic tour of this amazing facility. We've seen just about everything, now surrounded by 40,000 parts, give or take. Um, there's just one last request, a slightly bold one. Could I have a drive? Well, let's go back up to the showroom and uh, we'll sort a car out for you. Fantastic. So, Alan, we are back to where we started, back in the showroom. And I'm pleased to say we're walking towards something rather spectacular. What can you, what can you tell me about this? Uh, well, this is one of our continuation series models. It's a 4.3 litre uh, Tura uh, with a Vandenplar body. Um, and this is our demonstrator. And I was wondering whether you'd like to go out for a, a drive in it. I absolutely would, yes. That would be fantastic. But not before I say a massive thank you. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to hear your insight and to get such a, a fabulous tour of your wonderful facility here. Uh, and yes, we will be taking this out for a ride. But don't hate me, viewers, because that is going to be in part two of this video. So do make sure you've hit that subscribe button to see when the next video is uploaded, because it's going to be me driving this glorious car around the wonderful roads of Warwickshire in the not too distant future. For now though, I'll say thank you so much for watching. and We'll see you again soon. Alan, a huge thank you. Thank it's been you. an absolute pleasure. See you very soon. Look forward to it. Cheers.